Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today is Friday and uh, I'm excited because my office is starting to look like an office. It still needs a lot of touch-ups. I still don't have any of my cars on the back, but it's a work in progress. So today we're going to talk about color. I know everybody's waiting for that because we've been doing a lot of line drawings. So now that we're going to do color, I'm going to take you to see some real life examples. And then when we're done with that, I'm going to show you how to apply it to paper. And then we're going to color a car on paper and I'll do a template for you guys to download so you can go to the link below and find a place to download that same template so you can practice your coloring and that way it's easier for you to understand what we just talked about on the video. What's up guys, so I created something special for you guys. So it is very important that when we color a car, we understand what we're drawing. So basically we are not drawing cars, we're drawing landscapes, which sounds kind of weird, but that's what we do. When we're drawing a car, cars are mirrors. So if you're drawing a mirror, if you're drawing a mirror where I'm standing in front of it, you're not drawing a mirror, you're drawing me. If, drawing, if you're drawing a mirror in front of a car, you're not drawing a mirror, you're drawing a car. So the same thing, that's the issue with cars. Cars are super shiny, super reflective. So what you're drawing is not the actual car, but whatever is in front of the car, it's what it's reflecting. That's why it's so important when studios take a um, picture of a car they have to design a whole studio around it just so when they take the picture it describes the body and the surface as good as it can with that studio if you're gonna do it outdoors you want a place where there's like a horizon line that is kind of flat not not a city line not buildings not trees so I came here to a lake where the horizon is kind of low to explain that so I actually created a special piece for you guys I, I got a piece of acrylic and I painted it like super shiny almost like a piano finish so if you check this out you can see me right if you are drawing this you're not drawing the black shiny part you're drawing a picture of me and if you turn around this way this is what we want when we draw a car right we want a horizon line which is like right about here where my hand is that's your horizon line that's gonna be your darkest if it's a black car that's gonna be your darkest part right then you're gonna have your brightest part right above it and then you'll have a beautiful sky that just gets darker and darker but look how subtle that change of color is that has to be super subtle that's usually accomplished with pastels i developed my own technique where i just do it with markers but if you do that with pastels and i'll teach that later you're gonna get a beautiful change of tone then you have your core where it's like the darkest and then under that it's whatever the street brings you so if the car is sitting on grass you're gonna see grass underneath if you see like a super brown concrete you're gonna get like that brown concrete so it's wherever that car is is what it's gonna reflect right so here we have our fake car and then this is a flat image right it's almost like you're just painting a canvas but then cars have some curvature to it that's what I did this acrylic so if we have this curvature then the image changes look how it got compressed look at look how the houses you can see there's some houses in the background but as soon as it becomes like a car where I flex it look how all that gets compressed and then you have your beautiful sky up top and then you have your reflections of whatever's on the ground underneath and then you want a clean horizon because if I turn it where the camera is you see how it gets like this dirty reflections that's not what you want when you're taking a good picture of a car you want it nice and clean just like what I have right now this is actually pretty cool this can help you study a lot so when we're drawing cars and I'll do an example of paper this is what you want then another really cool effect is there's parts of the car where the surface is not like this but it's actually backwards right so we want to see something really cool now it's gonna be the same image but it's gonna be upside down look at that so now your sky is at the bottom and your reflections are at the top so let me see if you can see that better you see how now my sky is at the bottom and the reflections are at the top and look how it flips when I do the surface the opposite so if the surface is positive you get the sky on top your compressed horizon and your dark side and if you flip it the other way the image goes upside down and you get your sky and your ground on the top the other really important thing with black that's why I love drawing black cars is that black is probably the color that picks up the most colors out there so when I draw a black car I really have fun because like if you see here you can see a little bit of green and brown and the sky is blue and whatever colors are around it tutorials about how to do a black car a yellow car a red car all kinds of colors but black is so far my favorite okay like I said black picks up a lot of color now you see with this guy you see the beautiful sky how it goes like from red to white 
and the sky is not red it's, it's blue so actually you will actually see some purple tones over here but you see you have your horizon where it gets closer to the horizon is going to be your brightest then you have your core which usually the core will be the true color of the car like the this is a red paint that's going to look super red like this and then you have from the core down you see what's ever on the street on the ground and usually that's where you get your random weird reflections like my hand or anything whatever is in front of it so you'll have clean reflections at the top and then the dirty reflections same example if I go like this and I flex it you'll see how the horizon compresses you see how the sky is nice and clean and then the bottom has like dirty reflections and if I flip it upside down then my sky goes to the bottom and my ground goes to the top so that's super cool. Behind me, this is just the landscape. I'm not reflecting anything. You see a change of tone that is like light blue to whitish. And then you got the biggest contrast right here where my hand is. It's like dark as dark to white as white. And then you get all the messy reflections, houses, whatever is under that, right? So when you draw a car, it's important that you understand that. Like your sky is going to be super clean. You're not going to draw a car or take a picture of a car when the clouds are all messy or there's a... If you take the picture, if you're like on a city where there's a lot of buildings, all those reflections confuse what the body of the car is doing, right? The other cool thing would be is how much sky how much sky against how much ground you have, depending on the car. If the car is flexed at the very top, your horizon is going to be kind of high and then you'll have the rest of the car. If your car has more of a... So instead of having the curvature at top, it has it at the bottom, then you'll see that your horizon drop down or you'll see your horizon come up, depending on the car. It's depending which surface is, is perpendicular to the horizon, that's where your horizon will be. You can see how there's a horizon line right there and then you see how the brightest bright is right next to the darkest red and then you have like this soft transition over here and over here you have reflections of the grass or whatever that is exactly what I show you with the acrylic you have that horizon you have your sky you have your earth the only difference with this is that this has car shapes so actually that horizon instead of being a flat horizon is actually gonna follow the curvatures of the car so you have here the front bumper it has like that curvature to it then the door is pretty flat you see that flat horizon and then you see the back um, fender it has that curvature to it as well so you see that horizon so that's important and that I'll explain that better on different videos okay so we're gonna do we're gonna test out my new table that rotates with my camera which is super cool and now I can get more comfortable to get sketching so I already did the line drawing for you guys. You can download this drawing and that way you can, without spending time on doing a line drawing that is correct, you can focus on the coloring, which is what this lesson is about. So we're gonna do the black car. And like I say, what, my favorite part about the black cars is that I get to play a lot with color, right? So I'm gonna start with a um, number one, which is the um, warm gray. And today we're just gonna focus on the body of the car, right? So this is the tone that is picking up from the ground. So I'm gonna start with my number one. I'm gonna leave that space because that's like a chrome part. And then I don't care if I go into inside the tires because I know that's gonna be black after that. So I can always block it later. So you have to learn where you can make mistakes and where you can't. So now I'm gonna go with my number two. And with black cars, it depends how fast you want to make that transition from, from light to dark. So it would be how close together you put this change of tones. So I'm going to make it quick so the car gets darker fast. And I have all my markers organized so I can make this drawing easier. And look how I never stop in the middle of the of the car because if you stop in the middle of the car you get like dirty lines from the marker so it's better if you continue and then you can always throw in like random reflections and you can do like a super clean sketch or just put some reflections in there which make it look a little more realistic because there's always like stuff that will reflect on the ground so now I'm using my I went from three now this is my number five and this is all the warm grays the reason they're warm is because they're more towards the brown side. Like it's the the cool side will be blues and and, and the warm side will be 
more like browns. <laughs> Realizing if I can sketch and talk at the same time. So I'm using my warm tone so it can show how it's picking up the color from the ground. And then I will change to my warm, my cool grays because after that it really doesn't matter once it gets too dark. I can't really tell the difference too much. So I went one, three, five. And then five again, I repeated the five with a cool grace, with a warm grace, and now I'm going with the five over that cool, over that warm gray, but using my cool gray. Again, I don't care about this because that's gonna be in the shadow of the tire, so it's gonna be dark anyway. So I've learned where I have to be careful and where I don't have to be careful, and that saves me a lot of time. This is my number seven. Right, and I left this line for you guys so you know where your core is. That's where we're gonna put our core. Now I'm using the number nine, which it's like, it's like a percentage, so it's like 90% black. It's almost fully black. You can see all my markers are starting to dry out, so I need to go get some more markers. And now with my core, which is where I showed you how the reflections will compress and stuff, like this core will be like the houses and stuff that reflect, but since I'm trying to do like a photo studio kind of sketch, there'll be no houses reflecting, it'll be just a super clean line. You can always come back and like throw some random reflections if it's a little too clean or something and, and just play with it. It really doesn't matter. You can't get it wrong. Things reflect on the car. So since we don't know what's reflecting on it, it's hard to, to make a mistake because it could be anything. That line could be a curve. It could be a crack on the street. It could be anything. So now that's our, with what I explained, that's like from our horizon. That was our horizon and that's down and that's like picking up the color from the ground. And a, a good habit that I've gotten into is that I put a little bit of tone on the ground so it makes sense that it's picking up that color from the ground. Because if, if not, it, it looks weird, why is that brown? Like if I'm putting the car on grass, then I'll throw a little green on the bottom so it looks like it's reflecting up there. And then I'll get this darker and darker to make the shadow, but not on today's tutorial because today's tutorial is about a nice simple clean body so now I'm gonna take my sky so that's my horizon and then if I want it to be shiny I have to have my black is black against my white is white so that's why I'm gonna leave enough white in between the horizon line this is my blue this is the lightest blue I have it's called sapphire blue and I'm gonna be careful not to touch the black because if I touch the black one is not going to look as shiny and two is going to smudge up so i have to be very careful so you see how i went like super quick and that car is starting to look like a shiny nice car after that blue i can try a slightly darker blue let me see if it's this one this one's called azure azure i guess it's italian and again i'm working from top to bottom so i'm leaving some space i'm not completely covering all the light blue that I did before, okay? And then after that I can go back to my number one gray marker. To make sure that this car looks black. And then I can go build it slowly. Uh, again, the, the sky you have to be more careful with your transitions. So they have to be cleaner so it looks like super smooth and soft transitions. And on the ground, you can be a little more aggressive. Now I'm using my number three. So I already went with my one, two, three, five, and it's getting thinner and thinner at the top. So now 
instead of using the the chisel point the, like the long edge I'm using the short edge so so I make sure that I don't completely block all the soft transition that I have worked below I'm gonna do a seven super careful and now in here I'm gonna put this reflection It will make just the car look shiny. And then I can work that same technique, but over the windshield. So, well, I guess over the cabin. So I'm gonna go with my soft blue, with my sapphire blue, All right? And then I want it to go lighter towards the roof and then darker towards the bottom of the car, okay? So that's my, num my light blue. I'm gonna take my slightly darker blue. Okay, then I'm, go I'm gonna go with my number one gray. And I'm working on the, um, on the side line of the, of the car. So the roof is gonna stay blue. And then I'm just gonna build this slowly, slowly. So number one, now we're gonna go number two. And this A pillar is gonna go completely black, but I'm gonna build it slowly. And I always work light to dark because you can always build the lightness into a darker and you can never go from dark to light, not with markers. You can do it on digital media and with oil paintings and stuff, but with markers, once you get it dark, you cannot make it lighter. So you have to be careful. So that's my number five. Number seven. And now I'm not gonna work it all the way to the back, just to keep that clean transition. Made a little bit of a mistake there, but doesn't matter because I can always smudge it. I go back with my number one and I help clean that transition a little bit. And then I'm gonna go with my black. So this is completely black. I'm just gonna do a nice clean edge. And that's it, just clean my horizon. So if you see, we have a shiny black car. That was super simple. And um, so if I was gonna do that same transition that I did here, but with the kind of how I showed you with the red panel, I would just start with the bottom with like the light pink which is called sunset pink. Then I have one that is called powder pink and I will build it nice and slow. And then I will go to salmon, which is like my next darker one. Then I will go to, sorry, it's called deep salmon. So I go from salmon to deep salmon and then I would use my red. All right, so I'm doing exactly the same transition, but here, and then for the sky, I could put a little bit of blue with my sapphire, which is my softest blue, and then go with my sunset pink, and then powder pink, and then salmon. And the faster you work it before the markers dry, the better colors you're gonna get. Deep salmon. And now you can go red. So that's this in transition here. I made it here with the reds. I just want you to understand how you go from that panel that I show you on the street reflecting the skies to how we apply that into a car. And then we'll do a full car where we color the wheels and the windows and I'll teach all that later. But for now, for me, it was just important for you to understand. And that's why I chose such a simple car. This Porsche has like a super clean body. There's not much going on. So it's an easy way to show you how that horizon applies into cars. And that's it for now.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And we're gonna keep covering a lot more things about how to color a car, coloring different colors, different cars, and uh, for you to understand. It's almost like I wanna teach you how to draw with your eyes closed. I don't want you to just see with your eyes, I want you to see with your brain. So when you're drawing something and you look at something, you can correct it, you can make it look better. So if someone gives you a picture, you can make it better. And if you're doing designs, you're looking at something that doesn't exist. So you can't look at it to correct it, so it's better if you know in your brain how to create surfaces, colors, paint, everything you need.